Hello everyone, welcome back to Luxury Guy Song Phai Chat. I am Max, sommelier and wine educator at Red Apron in Vietnam. And today we will talk about the differences between cheap wine and expensive wine. If you've considered sometimes to go for a slightly better or slightly more premium wine, uh, in this video you will learn the differences. Why is there a wine called Bordeaux, which is usually not cheap but not very expensive either? Uh, and why there are some wines inside of Bordeaux labeled as saint Emilion, for example, or Pauillac, which come from the same region, but that will reach much higher prices on, on the shelves. We will talk about the taste difference, we will talk about the reasons why in, in the winery and in the vineyard, why those wines reach higher prices, and what to expect when you, when you select the wine in the future. <laughs> To better understand the differences between cheap and expensive wine, we need to look at two parts of the, of the life of a wine. We need to look at the vineyard, that's the field where the wine comes from, and then to look at the winery, that's the building where it becomes wine. Uh, in the vineyard, first, many, many factors will influence the quality of the wine and of course its price. Usually, when you look at a vine, the plant that produces the grapes, the winemakers have one choice to make. They either produce a lot of an okay quality wine or they have to produce a very small amount of super high quality wine. One way to have small amount of very good quality grapes naturally is to work with old grapes, old vines, sorry, old plants. This here is the example of one of the oldest vineyards in the world. It's located in Australia. It was planted in 1853. It's only eight rows of vine in a vineyard that are extremely old and because they became old, they produce a lot less fruit, but each berry is charged with the highest quality. So, of course, because they produce very small amount, the price of each bottle will be a little bit higher than a normal bottle, but the experience when you taste it will be incredible, miles away from what you would get from a cheaper bottle. Another explanation from the vineyard is vineyards like the ones of Portugal here in the, in the port, in the Douro Valley, or also in Germany and other parts of the world, very, very steep slopes. Vineyards that look a little bit like Sapa, the mountainous terraced vineyards, very steep. Sometimes people have to go rock climbing to harvest the grapes because it's impossible to access normally the vineyards. It's so steep, it's very difficult. So of course, to work these vineyards is high maintenance, it's very difficult, it's labor intensive. So the wine is going to be a little bit more expensive on the market. But again, the reason why we still work these impossible vineyards is because the wine is just delicious. Có hai yếu tố để phân biệt được rượu vang rẻ tiền và đắt tiền. Đầu tiên, đó chính là xu hướng trồng nho. Có hai xu hướng, xu hướng trồng nho theo sản lượng, tức nghĩa là chú trọng về số lượng và chất lượng tương đối. Còn xu hướng về chất lượng thì sản lượng ít, chất lượng cao và cho ra được mùi hương tuyệt vời. Ví dụ như đây, đây là chai vang được làm từ cây nho lâu năm nhất thế giới tại Úc, được trồng vào năm 1853 và hiện nay chỉ còn 8 nhãn nho. Vì sản lượng ít nên số lượng chai giới hạn dẫn đến giá thành cao. Tuy nhiên thì mùi vị của nó thì không còn gì để bàn cãi. À, yếu tố thứ hai đó chính là địa hình của vườn nho. À, Bên cạnh đây, làng vang được trồng tại vùng thung lũng sông Duro, Bồ Đào Nha. Đây là nơi có địa hình hiểm trở và để thu hoạch thì những người nông dân phải leo lên những mỏm đá để hái nho. Chính vì vậy nên điều kiện chăm sóc cây trồng cũng khó khăn, đòi hỏi nhân công thì phải có tính chuyên môn cao nên là dẫn đến giá thành cao. Tuy nhiên thì vùng đất này sẽ cho ra được những loại nho rất tuyệt vời. If we move on to the wine arena and not the vineyard, not the field, then one of the biggest reasons why some premium wines are expensive is oak, oak cask. There is a tradition of aging premium wines in oak uh, in the winery. And first, when you want to use an oak cask, you cannot put any wine you want in an oak cask. If the wine is not full-bodied, very concentrated, rich, a big red wine, red or white, then the oak cask is going to kill it. It's going to take over the flavors and kill the flavors. So first you need to start with an extremely premium wine. 
Then you decide to age this wine in oak to make the, the, the texture of the wine feel smoother, to make the flavors much more complex, not just about fruit, about spices, about vanilla, nutmeg, clove, cinnamon, uh, and of course some regions of the world that produce very premium wines are closely associated with oak aging. We usually think of Bordeaux in France, Burgundy in France as well, and Napa Valley in California in the US. So here we have some examples of these wines. If you take, for example, uh, um, this legend of Napa Valley, Opus 1. This wine comes from a very small area inside of the small area that is Napa Valley, an area called Oakville. Uh, Oakville is very small, it produces wines with a lot of personality, a lot of concentration and body, and the reason why they use oak cask is to make the tannins, which the dry, astringent feeling, feel a little bit smoother, softer on the palate, also to add a very long-lasting spiciness. Um, Opus 1 is usually aged for about 18 months in 100% new oak. So to give you an idea, if you calculate a little bit, um, the price of a new oak cask, roughly around $1,000, and you can put just over 200 liters inside. So the average impact on the bottle to every six months in oak is about $5. So if you imagine that for that bottle aged 18 months in oak, there's about 15, sometimes $20 that are only here to pay for the oak cask, not the grapes, not the workers, not the bottle, not the transportation, not the taxes, just the oak cask. That's why the price is a little bit higher. Uh, we have other examples like this Chateau Ballandro. It comes from a very premium area in Bordeaux called saint Emilion. And in saint Emilion, this is a premier Grand Cru Classé, which is the very absolute best of saint Emilion. Chateau Valando is famous for doing some of the longest agings in that area. They aged this particular wine about 30 months. 30, that's 3 zero, 30 months in 100% new oak cask. So again, if you go back to the calculation we just did, that's a huge part of the actual price of the bottle that is down to that oak cask. Why would we do that? Because that wine comes out of the oak smooth, soft, complex, a lot of layers of aroma, a fantastic wine to try, hence the price slightly higher. The region of Burgundy, the last one that we have here on the shelf, is a, a region that uses a different grape variety. The other two there rely on very heavy grape varieties, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, grapes that have more body in the wine. Burgundy relies heavily on a grape called Pinot Noir, a very soft, a very supple, smooth, uh, uh, elegant grape variety. So it cannot age in 100% new oak for 30 months like these ones, but it will take less time in oak that is not as new, in used oak, to make a very refined, very elegant, soft flavor, soft texture as well, um, which when you smell this one, this was for about 17 months in 80% uh, new oak. When you, when you smell this, you've got lovely touches of vanilla, you've got some dry spiciness, but it's all behind the fruit. The fruit is the main focus. You've got a lot of that cherry, a lot of that soft, soft cherry, fresh cherry, a blackberry, a touch of blackberry as well, but all the complex uh, spiciness from the, the oak in the background. This is why sometimes some wines are a little bit more expensive. Could be the vineyard, could be the winery. Many explanations are possible. Yếu tố nữa ảnh hưởng tính giá thành của một chai rượu đó là việc rượu được ủ lâu ở trong thùng gỗ vỏ sồi. Một thùng gỗ vỏ sồi có giá tới 1.000 đô và chứa được 225 lít rượu. Đó là lý do tại sao chỉ những lít rượu thật sự xuất sắc và chất lượng nhất mới được ủ trong thùng rượu này để có khả năng phát triển thêm về hương vị cũng như chất lượng. Maxim đã có nói về ba ví dụ của những vùng và những chai nổi tiếng về việc ủ rượu trong vỏ sồi đó là Valando ở vùng Bạc Đô, Opus One của Thung Lũng Napa và Domaine de Eugenie của Burgundy. Thay mặt cho Luxury Guy sống phải chất, chúng tôi xin chân thành cảm ơn anh Maxim Dubois, lầu sommelier và wine educator tại Red Apron 
Fire Wine and Spirit đã dành thời gian đến đây chia sẻ với chúng ta những kiến thức về rượu rất thú vị. Nếu quý vị yêu thích video này hãy nhấn like, share và subscribe kênh Luxury Guy sống phải chất và chúng tôi sẽ quay trở lại vào lúc 4 giờ chiều thứ ba hàng tuần. Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại.